So hello everyone. And uh, we're we're not alone on that one. So like say hello to Brian, Brian Lug, if you want to introduce yourself. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so my, my name is Brian, and I am from Malaysia originally. Um, so in, in uh, well, I, I used to work as an engineer, a food engineer, actually, for mm -hmm. uh, French companies as well as American companies. Oh. And uh, I decided when I was 30 years old, I decided to leave and uh, to travel the world and to find a new career. And languages uh, were very interesting to me, and I decided to learn to, to focus on this part of... of um, uh how to say this part of my uh my, my i guess my my learning circle because i went full circle from mm -hmm. languages and into engineering and then in back to languages uh, mm -hmm. so i i work with um a company called you talk so we produce mm -hmm. language learning materials for basically it, it's a language app that teaches you how to learn languages uh, basically from day one so you listen you learn a phrase it's great for learning vocabulary so that's mm. one thing that I do as well. And then uh, I also work for um, independent groups in, in Australia, uh, working on Aboriginal languages. So that's what mm. I am mm. focused on at least this, this, the, these last few months, um, specifically with groups in around Sydney, Melbourne, especially especially the, the southeast of Australia. Yes. That's what I'm doing. And uh, that, that, that kind of work, it, it's very interesting. Languages are completely different from what I'm used to. So yeah, mm. <laughs> that's, that's really Yeah, it must be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's uh, it's interesting. Uh, it, it's very different because my my the language that I, I've I've spoken all my life are basically uh, different Chinese dialects, Malay, mm. which is our national language, and I mm. also uh, I speak English, of course. I learned Hindi for work mm. many years ago, and I also speak French and a bit of Russian, a little bit mm. Russian. I studied Russian, but but yeah, it's, it's only like for the past six months mm. that I concentrated on Russian, so it's mm. it, it's horrible. Yeah, мне мне трудно говорить на русском. <laughs> but it's good to have all these different language families. I guess it really yeah. helps you compare, contrast, see what is specific exactly. about what language. Exactly. And, exactly. And if I may interject, uh, you, yes. you're you being very humble because I also watched uh, one of your videos and you were like actually saying uh, quite a few words in German. With a, your accent was yeah. absolutely perfect. So. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. <laughs> You're very kind, German. I also studied <laughs> Japanese, but I've forgotten everything after university. Uh, Japanese, I, I just, yes, because I, I never, yeah, I never worked in a Japanese. Challenge, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's also because I never worked in a Japanese-speaking sort of environment. So I just, it just when you don't practice, it, just, it goes away. <laughs> Unfortunately, yes, but then it comes I'm back. I'm sure <laughs> when yeah. it has to, it comes I, I, back. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think I'll let me just uh share my screen and start. Yes, uh, please. Okay. Uh, I will uh, just, just see if uh, um enable. Right. Perfect. Yes, it's on. Oh, so I'm just okay. gonna do a very quick introduction. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm I will speak English, but I might switch into maybe French and Russian and something. Well, we'll oh, see. Yeah. Oh, yes, if it's please relevant. Do. If it's if it's relevant, uh, mm -hmm. so I will share my screen. If you can can you see my screen uh, right now? Uh, it's yes. coming. Yes, it's good yeah, now. Perfect. perfect. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put this on full screen so you can see this map of um, Australia. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So this is a presentation I did during the Polyglot Conference actually um, in 2010. So it's an online conference mm -hmm. organized by Richard Simcott. If you know who he is, he's also another interesting person. You can grab hold of him and interview him. He's a, uh, yeah, he's he's uh, he's he was voted as he was voted Britain's most poly polyglot multilingual man. In, mm. yeah, many, many years ago. So he speaks like 25, 30 languages, maybe maybe fifty. I don't know, but yeah. Mm. <laughs> well, well, so impressive. yeah. So mm. so uh, a lot of a lot of people in Australia, they um, even though they 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 they've lived there all their lives, they know very little about Aboriginal languages, like what was mm. spoken there before Europeans came, for example. Mm. Um, you see this map. So this is a very very good map. So I I put the link as well. It's Ayatsis. If you can find it uh, online, mm. just type ayatsis.com uh, .gov uh, .au, and you will mm. come to this um, very nice map. <laughs> yeah, and it shows mm. you all the languages in Australia. And the, the most interesting thing is, um, like, yeah, I'm just going to go to the next slide. So so the, these are traditional. So I, I, I don't put photos of people uh, online yeah. when I'm, I'm talking about Australian language because there, there's a taboo, like, when if a person passes away for a certain period, the, the, the people from their community or their families, they don't, they don't say their names and mm. they don't look at their pictures. And right. they, don't, they, don't, they don't share. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so that 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 that's part of the call for a certain mourning period. And they don't even say words that sound like their names for a while, mm -hmm. for one year, two years. Oh. 
Yeah. yeah. This so, is so something I, I read about um, in yes. relation to the Aboriginal languages, a specificity exactly. of avoidance exactly. of certain words that may influence 100%. their pronunciation. Mm. Yes, 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 yes. That, that's a part of the taboo as well, part of their traditional custom. So so I, I don't put photos of, of, of people who have passed away, but I do put paintings on my mm -hmm. slides. So these pictures that were drawn yeah, by people. Nice. Who <laughs> mm. Yeah, so this you can find this online as well. Uh, I put the link, mm. in, uh, I think the link is somewhere around. But anyway, uh, if you look up James Wallace, uh, Captain James Wallace, he was one of the first Australian sort of, uh, he said he was a sailor, but he liked painting as well. He drew mm -hmm. images of Australia and the people when he went there for the first time. Uh, in 1890s, early, uh, no, no, 1790s, early 1800s. So like the, during the the the, the Regency period in, in, in the UK, in British history, probably that late, late 18th century, early 19th century period. Before the Victorian era, they, there were already people um, traveling to Australia from Europe. Mm -hmm at that time mm. okay so so before european could just before the europeans arrived unfortunately they were like i would say 300 languages or how you define languages is of course you know it's 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 quite mm. difficult it could be a language is it a dialect is it a, you know yeah. so we'll say yeah. two to three hundred languages right um mm. currently there are only about a hundred left out of this like so more than half of them are either extinct or mm. they are called what we call sleeping languages. So that, that people mm. who remember them, who speak, who who heard their grandparents speaking, them, but they don't speak it. But mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're in many areas, there are of course um, there there are sort of these um, projects or, or or sort of efforts to to sort of um, revive these languages, revitalize them a, as well. Mm. But about hundred of them are still used throughout Australia uh, mm. quite regularly. Uh, unfortunately, majority more than half are already highly endangered. Unfortunately. Uh, because of uh, we will look at it in later slides why and you know mm -hmm. why this goes on. It's really sad, but I, I hope that we can at least you know try to revive and uh, revitalize many mm. of these language groups. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, uh, the other thing I want to tell you about is that Australia Australian um, Aboriginal peoples, the 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 native peoples of Australia. They did not have like in Europe or in Asia, like a traditional hierarchical structure. They they didn't have any kings and queens and government mm -hmm. and princes. Mm. They don't have everybody was equal. So it was it mm. was a, a socialist, a, a traditional mm. egalitarian society. Everyone is equal, mm. and, and I will talk a little bit about why the, the societies can function despite that there's no hierarchy. They they still manage to to make things work. Mm. <laughs> we'll talk about this yeah. a little bit yeah. later on, and it's it's tied with their language as well. So uh, mm -hmm. this is a mm. very interesting topic. Yeah. Uh, any questions so far? If you if you you know, <laughs> uh, it's uh, maybe actually I'm I'm kind of curious. Is there like some uh, common traits within like all uh, like languages and also all people like uh like within uh, uh -huh. yes and yes how most, it might most actually the, influence the, the languages yeah. actually you're right so because australia was settled for a very very long time so a lot of the cult i i would say most of the cultures are actually linked and connected so there are people have there are common traits across the whole continent like mm. I, I was surprised that i found very basic vocabulary is shared from like between Sydney and and up, up in Darwin. People still mm -hmm. share this vocabulary wow. all the way. Yeah. So the the, the culture and also the language. Yeah, yeah. It, it's Australia like, is it's huge. Going from, so. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, it's like yeah. going from like like mm -hmm. from Portugal to 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 the east of well to Russia, and you find mm -hmm. that oh yeah, there are actually words that people can understand. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, it's very interesting. So uh, we'll, we'll look at some of the the languages and how they're connected, sure. mm -hmm. and also how like. Uh, things like 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 uh, cultural uh, objects, art, how they are spread across Australia. Uh, mm. So in the next slides, <laughs> right. okay, yeah. th that's a very good question. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> if we go here, okay, so this is a map. The, so the previous maps, like the the two slides before, with all the languages, these are the language families in Australia. If you look at it, tell me what what is unique. If you take a look at it, what is different? <laughs> well, the vast majority is covered by a specific, uh, mm. maybe two two languages, a group of two languages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, there is quite a large variety mm. saturated in the north. Yeah, like the coastal. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. like a, yeah. Yeah, it's got a very strange distribution. It's like almost like ninety percent of the languages in Australia belong to like one family, <laughs> mm. like like it's just one family. And the others, like in, in the top, uh, so the top left, your top left, so the north northwest mm. corner, north and northwest corner, mm. uh, there the, are like many many small language families. Um, so so this is the weird thing. Some people say that the 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 yellow area, this big yellow area. Okay, so um, mm. I don't know if you can see my my. Um, oh yes, if you can see my person here. Yeah. So I, I'm going to move my my uh, mouse. Mm. So you see. Yeah. So this mm. this whole area here, the yellow area. 
is where they speak a language a language family like Indo-European, for example, in in Europe uh -huh. called Pamanyungan. So Pamanyungan, and it just mm -hmm. comes from the word for man or human being in their language. Pamanyungan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. And all these colored, the other colored groups are all other languages that uh, are not supposedly not related to them, but they share a lot of common things like the phonology, some even some vocabulary they share. So mm -hmm. it's very hard to differentiate. Some scientists, some linguists think that the, all the languages belong to the same family, just that they've been spoken so long that they, the ones in the Northwest, Northwest uh, and the North, they just they just drifted apart. Um, uh, Australia has been inhabited for like 50, 60,000 years at least, so it's, it's a long time. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and some people believe that actually there's this, this is one family that's spread out through the whole of Australia <laughs> and, uh, mm -hmm. and as well quite recently. So uh, there are different views. I, I, I'm i open to all kinds of interpretations. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Roughly, so so Glossolog, if you look at my the bottom, uh, your bottom right, uh, you see that the there are roughly 23 independent families in Australian languages, mm -hmm. 23 and mm -hmm. nine ISIS, which means that there are nine languages in Australia that are not related to anything else around the world, mm -hmm. completely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Kind the of like Hungarian. Japanese, Japanese. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. <laughs> 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 and Japanese is, yeah, exactly. So yeah. there could be like up to 33 uh, mm -hmm. language families or groups. Could be, could be, mm -hmm. you know, so depending on how you look at it. Uh, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. open to interpretation, but when you look at, we'll look at the, some of the, the, the phonology and the grammar, and you can, you, you'll tell me what you think. Are they relatives or not? Or, mm -hmm. We'll see as we mm -hmm. go on to the later slides. Okay, so, yeah, hello. Good. So, yeah. So, some of the languages um, with the largest number of speakers is uh, Tuwal. So, the DH mm -hmm. is a ta, ta. So, in, in, in most Aboriginal languages, there's no difference between a, a T and a D. Ta and da. Mm -hmm. It's, mm -hmm. but they, they do okay. distinguish where you put your tongue. So the D H is we put your tongue and it touches your teeth, your front teeth. Da, da. Mm -hmm. da, da, da. And then there's there's a sound where you put your tongue right at the top of your the back of your mouth or da da, like in Indian mm -hmm. languages. That's very common mm -hmm. in Australia. We'll look at this these type of sounds. Mm -hmm. Um the other that's also dual and that's upper aranda. Aranda is of course spoken in the northern territory, so the southern part. So North Central Australia, in the words, and Pichanjara. Uh, Warlpiri is the one that I'm working on. So the, the fourth line, uh, so W-A-R-L-P-I-R-I -I, is pronounced Warlpiri or Warlpiri. And mm. that's what I'm working on. There are also other languages uh, that are in this group, but 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 uh, in the same family as well. This is the Pamanyungan family. And uh, yeah, and so this is a pretty, pretty big uh, language family. Of course, a, a lot of Australian languages are spoken traditionally by very small numbers of people. So even before Europeans came to Australia, they already spoke about 1,500, maybe, you know, the kind mm -hmm. of small people, yeah, in small mm -hmm. groups throughout Australia. So they never had, like, it wasn't like like Chinese, it was spoken by, you know, large numbers of people in, in a big mm -hmm. empire. Mm -hmm. They never had an empire. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. we'll talk about this. So it's very interesting that, like, neighbouring groups even have, like, uh, um, traditional ways to, to treat each other and whether they're friends or they're foes. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and there's a ritualistic, there's a reason why. And, and, and the social... Um, sociological factors as well. Uh, we'll look at this later on. And it's also tied with mm. the language. Uh, so it's, it, okay. it's very mm. interesting. Yeah, so it, it's one of the cases where when a language goes extinct, I feel very, very sad because not only the language, the culture, everything goes with it because mm. it's, it's all... Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. yeah. Especially yeah. in Australia. Yeah. And and mm. most a lot of people don't think about this, but it, it, it's really true. Um, mm. Okay, so we'll see the next slide. So, all right. So phonology. <clears throat> uh, anybody, uh, are you both... Sorry, I'm just go back. Are you both interested in in phonology or phonetics? So, <laughs> yeah, sure, sure, we are. I mean, we're not specialists yeah, by any means. Yeah. But, yeah, sure. It's yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, mm -hmm. so I, I just wrote them the the very simple differences between their languages and uh, European language, for example. So, mm -hmm. so most languages you know, only have three vowels. So, uh, e, u, a, but mm -hmm. the, it's not like in European language where you write e, u, a, like in in Italian or something where it's very clear. It's e, u, a. So it's very centralized. Mm -hmm. Some mm -hmm. languages have vowels but that's it uh five and and one has like six six vowels, but that's maximum that there's no uh very mm. few words with the, the uh and a uh and, uh and the uh that you have in europe no the, it, you don't hear those very rarely uh mm. in australia okay, okay. Mm. Uh, and and some languages in the central part of australia have even lost a lot of vowels they only have a uh and uh that's it mm. <laughs> yeah. well, that's hard to yeah. imagine yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 so it's it's a very interesting language. Uh, Aranda, I'm currently learning Aranda at the moment, and because coming from another language into this one, it's like wow, uh, it's like mm -hmm. if you speak Italian and trying to learn French, you know that, that kind of difference, uh, mm -hmm. phonology, yeah. it, that, that kind of yeah. So so it, yeah. it's really interesting. 
Yeah. Uh, so this is just the, the pronunciation of the vowels. Um, and, and then you look at consonants and you tell me what is unique, what, what strikes you as different. Uh, if coming from a European or Japanese or Asian perspective, you tell me what is different. So, mm. so, mm -hmm. uh, I, I have, oh, so I don't have any uh, slides of um, the phonology, but mm. anyway, uh, so if you look at the top, these are the most common vowels. So P and B, T and D, K and G. Mm. There is interesting fact is that there are many R, R sounds. So there's a R and there's a R. And some mm. languages have a R. And, and another language has a R, like, like, in, like in French, or, well, uh, like a German mm. kind of R sound. R. So R, R, R. And mm. R. <laughs> a lot of different types mm. of R sounds. This is very common. Okay. So uh, the, 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 the weird thing is these languages have no fricatives. So like S, Sh, Z, V. They don't have any of this. Mm. It's very unique sound. Mm. So to the point where um, languages that, that borrow words from English, like sister, they'll say chicha, chicha, chicha. Mm. <laughs> ah, I see. Wow. They mm. yeah. S, yeah. It, 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 none of the languages in Australia, except very far north near Papua New Guinea, does like a one language that has an S or a, a, a Z. Z kind of sound, but that's mm. it. They don't have this. So mm. yeah, and there's no distinction between like voice voices. Ba ba ga ga. Uh, la, uh, da da. Yeah, that sounds the same. A lot of languages. Um, mm. uh, reflex sounds are very common. So this this I'm gonna put my my cursor here. If you can see it. Uh, retroflex is like when you make your uh, da da na la sounds. So you have to put your tongue at the top of the your, your mouth. Da, mm. da, yeah. Na, mm. la. And there's a distinction between that and also the the further front uh the normal t da da na la, yeah. So that's okay. that's a, a feature. Yeah. And some languages have have sorry oops I went too far. Some languages have a pre stop nasal so, uh, ma at na at na at na like it's like it sounds like you're sneezing a little bit. So like like uh aranda it has the word for mara which mara which is a country or place utnama. Which is a bite mm. and at namma, which is a, a a stick for digging. It's it's a tool used for traditionally to dig for 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 plants or fruits or, mm. or things like uh, uh, lava to for for eating. Uh -huh. And mm. and so that there, there, there are no mm -hmm. and there are no fricatives, so no no s s z z sounds in, in you have in European languages. They don't have it, uh, mm -hmm. except for one language in in the north, which is near Papua New Guinea. So we suspect that's because of the influence from the Papuan languages they develop these sounds. But but mm. the whole of Australia, there is no um, yeah. So S, S and Z and, and, and F and V and now you don't hear it. Yeah. Mm. So that that's an interesting that's about the phonology. This is just the the, the sound structure that is like this. Mm. Um mm. and there are reasons why why people people uh, the languages develop this way. Um a lot of linguists think that it's because um I, I don't know, because I, I have friends who work as, as doctors in in uh, and also people who teach as teachers in, in Australia as well, in, in the outback. And they mm. tell me that uh, quite a lot of Aboriginal children suffer from ear ear infections. Like they 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 are very prone to ear infections, and a mm. lot of people have hearing. It's it, it's a genetic. Uh, they suspect it's part. Uh -huh. It's genetics. Oh. And so because okay. you, you when you can't hear properly, you can't hear sounds like s sh f s. It okay. leaves quiet mm. sounds. Hard to hear. Whereas ta ka ga nga, like those sounds are easier to hear. Mm. So pa pa da da. Sounds the same to, to if your if your mm. if your ears, but but ga uh, cha ga da like that that's very really clear, mm. and maybe that's why they, they they develop sounds like this. And you can also tell because almost every a lot of not every but a lot of uh, uh, tribal groups have their own sign language in Australia. Oh, mm. wow. everyone has a sign language, and they and and they would well almost everybody and they would use it in specific circumstances, like like in in among the Warburi when uh, members of your family pass away, women normally they don't talk for. It can be a few weeks, a few months, you know, and they use sign language to talk. Wow. And and the mm. men would you go hunting, they will use sign language, of course, so that the, the animals don't hear them. So so it's it use everybody uses sign language in one way or another. So that could be also another reason why <laughs> this develops. Mm. Do they so also articulate and... uh, when when yes. speaking? Yes. 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 Oh yes, yes. When speaking as well. Yes, e exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is one. But I, I want to really go to the the communities to you know to experience this. It must yeah, be very okay. interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So I'll go to the next slide. Uh, so yeah. So this is the map of the languages in Australia. So I don't know if you can see. Uh, let me see if I can put a pointer. No, I don't know how to. Anyway. Uh. Yeah. So I put my cursor here. So um. A lot of the languages I'm working on are from either this area in the southeast over here, mm -hmm. or here. In the central desert area, so that's uh, central, like 
New uh, so it's Northern Territory, Northern Territory. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Yeah. And uh, let's go to the next slide. Yeah. So we're looking at other areas as well. So the, the, the northern area is also very interesting because it's got a lot of variety. So different languages have, you know, uh, a lot of interesting structures that are not the same as in the south. And we will look mm -hmm. at this. So so oh, these are the features of Australian language in general. We'll, we'll just talk about in general and we'll talk about the northern and the southern languages. So um, mm -hmm. the, the top line, so a large so number of places of articulation for consonants. So this is a very fancy way of saying you put your tongue in, this is your mouth. And this is mm. your your yeah, and you put your tongue in different locations. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm. In about a yeah. lot of up to six, six places in, in some languages. Wow. So you've got a ba, mm. you have a uh, ta, you have a ta, you have a ka, and a ta and a ka. So mm. a lot of different different locations. So like like in Aranda, the word for girl is marla, marla. Uh here is nanna, nanna. So you have to put your tongue out between your teeth, nanna, nanna means here. Uh, mm. Anama is to sit down. Arna, Arna is a tree. Anyanda is one. And Nganna, Nganna is you, you, Nga. So this sound is very common, Nga sound in, in the whole Asia Pacific area, except Japan. I don't know why. In Malaysia, mm. we have a lot, a lot of Malay with Nga, 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 like initial Nga. But uh, yeah, so, so, so Nganna. Uh, yeah, Nga. Okay, and mm. and some uh, northern languages have a glottal stop, so it's like it's like in in you know a glottal stop, right? Like in in English, uh, uh, uh like the way they say butter, some people mm. say butter, butter. Uh, cup of coffee, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the butter, yeah, yeah. we've lived in England, right? Yeah, it's... exactly, exactly, exactly. You hear it in, in yeah, London, a lot of people say that way, butter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So mm. the, uh, the uh sound is is written as H in some languages, so they have mm. binin. So in 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 Kunming, which is one of the languages in the north, they say binin. For people and bini mm. bini for people, so they they use reduplication a lot uh, in this uh -huh. language uh, to to make it simple, yeah, okay. uh, a bit like, singular. Yeah, yeah, Japanese hitobito like people yeah, in other so, languages so too. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, 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 mm. and it's common, quite common in Australia. Uh, mm. In some languages, it happens all the time. In others, it's only certain words that have this, mm -hmm. but uh, it, mm. but it's it's quite common. Yeah, exactly, mm. exactly. Mm. And so we have also so um, we're looking at morphology. So uh, this is a bit long. I, I'm sorry because I, I I put this in a presentation for a, at a at a conference. So yeah, a lot of information. So I think you might, you might have pause and if you're on YouTube, I pause and slowly read through. But but um, mm -hmm. the basic the gist is um, a lot of languages have free word order. So that, that not like in Japanese where the verb is always at the end of a sentence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then it can be anywhere. In many languages, it can be anywhere. There's no I I eat fish, fish eat I, I whatever. Mm -hmm. It's completely mm -hmm. there's no what order because the case system is very very important, like, like in Russian oh. or uh, oh, right. maybe not in Bulgarian. Yeah. I know that you guys. <laughs> uh, Bulgaria has no cases. That's what like yeah. super specific and makes it super <laughs> hard to learn other Slavic languages. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I I realized. Yeah, yeah. I had a Macedonian friend tell me the same thing. Like, oh, okay. So same. Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, so they, they they have cases, but the cases are a lot easier than in, in, in European languages because, like, mm -hmm. like Russian or German, there's a masculine, feminine, neuter, and that changes the the the, the different types of uh, the, the forms a word will take. In in Aboriginal languages, normally the case is always a suffix you put at the end, and it, it never changes. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's always the same regardless. So that's easy. Um, so normally verbs have no conjugation, so you don't have to worry about I, I eat, you eat, you know, je mange, tu manges, vous mangez in French. Uh, it, it, mm. it, it never changes. Usually okay. the only thing that changes is the tense, like present or future or past tense, that kind of thing. Mm. Uh, some languages have very interesting systems. They have another system of pronouns they put uh, in the sentence as well. So like I eat fish and you have to put like uh, another like, like little pronoun that says I do something to eat. Uh, I think you have this in in Slavic languages as well. I think something like that. I don't know, it, 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 like uh, it, it, if I, I can't think of any examples. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like in in Russian, you say ya tibie something something, or I I, I you and you know je te don. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, like yeah. the, so the direct and indirect te, uh, objects mm, going. Uh, mm -hmm. okay. as part of exactly. the, so the in, Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. so these languages. Will have this, but they also use it in in actual uh, full sentence that they would put a mm -hmm. pronoun there, ah, just okay. to give mm -hmm. extra information. And even when they don't need it, it's in European languages, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. in Australian language, there. So 
that's a very that's an interesting structure. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The fourth line, one, two, three, four. The fifth line, sorry. So the the Pamanungan languages are like this. The mm -hmm. in the north languages often have like a prefix. They, they like they like to put information at the front of a word. So it's a verb, and then you have a prefix to show I and you, and everything is all squashed into one word. So in these mm -hmm. languages, one word. Uh, it's a one sentence uh, in, in in English or in, in in a European language, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a little bit different, and it's I find it very very interesting. That you have to think in a, in advance before you speak. So like, what? How many things can I put into this? <laughs> verb? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's yeah, so uh, what I find most interesting in Japanese too. Like you can't just yeah. start yeah. thinking the way you normally think. You have mm -hmm. to start thinking in a different yeah. way. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Completely different, and also because these languages have, have, like I said, a free word order. Sometimes you have, to, okay, you don't have to think about like subject, verb, object. I have to follow it. No, no, you can say it any way you want. It will make sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, mm -hmm. a morphosyntactic alignment. I think I will just simplify this because it's very technical. Uh, <laughs> so, do you know what an ergative language is? Like the way ergative um... language. Not really. I'm scared of saying something wrong. <laughs> so please tell me. No, don't worry about it. Don't worry. Yeah. So like 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 in, in English you say I I um, I saw her, right? You can't say I saw she, right? Yeah, I yeah. saw her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the reason, and there's a reason why for this, because in English, uh, her is actually can be used as an object pronoun, mm -hmm. but it cannot be used as a subject when she, she, she does something, right? Yeah. So, <clears throat> like, like in Russian as well, ya, ya and then uh, tibia, you cannot say mm -hmm. ti and tibia, they are different words because one is the subject, yeah. one is the object. So All these right. are separate. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so in an ergative language like Basque, Basque is like this as well. The, the mm -hmm. subject of an intransitive verb, like I, no, well, not I sleep, I walk or I fall, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. is the same as the object of a transitive sentence mm -hmm. or verb. So, so yeah. me. So the me, so it's a different different way of thinking. So it, it's almost like a passive in English. So like they never say like I, I ate fish. They'll say something like the fish is eaten by me, something like that. Mm -hmm. right. So this is how the, 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 the way of expressing things is different. There is no I do something to you. It's you something happens to you and I I caused it. So that's how. Mm -hmm. they, that's how yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's more like an language, uh, roughly, uh, and mm -hmm. then the bottom part. Um, yeah, and then there's also the problem is that many of these languages are split ergative, which means that different like different words function differently. So some words work like English, like like I saw him like this. Other words okay. function like Basque. So you have to learn which words which does what. It, oh, it's right. uh, it's a very mm -hmm. so like pronouns mm. pronouns in some languages will be more like a like I and me, and in other languages yeah. it works like like in Basque, like in yeah, so the, the other way. So it's it's mm. it's it's a little bit interesting. Uh, complicated to learn. I, I find it very difficult to teach this to people. <laughs> like, after, yeah, yeah, you have to think, think in, a, in a different way, but only for certain yeah. words. Then you have to think back in English for some words. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the last line mm -hmm. uh, almost all languages have like two words for we. So, me and you, and me and someone else. Mm. I don't know if you uh, have this. Okay. Yeah. So, like, yeah. like in Indonesian, Malay, we kita and kami. So, kita is me and you, kami is me, but not you and someone else. Mm. Uh, and in mm -hmm. Chinese, you're woman. I think so in, um, when mm. we had a talk about um, one of the Indian languages, Maya Lama. South Indian languages do this. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. Malagasy, that is Malagasy as well. Oh, I think right. they do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also Malayalam, they, they do it. Yeah, so so if you say like we we're going to school, it, it doesn't mean it can be you and us, or you know, in English it can be you or maybe you or maybe not you. But in 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 these languages, it's very clear, <laughs> not you mm -hmm. and us in my family, or me and my friends, or me and you and everybody else. So there's mm -hmm. a different words, yeah. different mm -hmm. words for this. And uh, yeah, so these are the these are sort of the, the features of the languages. Uh, any questions okay. so far? <laughs> there we go. Uh, well, it's really quite clear and very interesting to to see like the yeah I suppose like really influenced culture like either culture yeah. will influence the yeah. language or the other way around but they must think very differently mm -hmm. because of uh, <laughs> that way of thinking yeah. Mm. yeah exactly so we'll we'll see some examples uh, I I might cut off and go to maybe Wikipedia because they have a very good uh, uh, uh graph that we can use later on but, but let me just finish okay. a couple of slides mm. and yeah I think that's it. <laughs> okay so mm. um the so next one so 
So well, I chose four very specific languages to look at with some examples, so you can see how it sounds like and what it looks like when it's written down. None of the languages in Australia have a writing system, so they they don't have. This was only introduced like in the 1950s, 60s, 70s uh, that time mm. in in different uh, how to write. So we'll look at like four languages: so Walpiri, Aranda, Walmajari, and uh, Binin Gunwok. So these are the, the four languages and how you say them. So. Mm. Um, yeah, so this is uh, so in in Walpuri, This is a, a very interesting language because it's a uh, um, it, it's very dear to me because I have, I have a lot of friends from this area. So I I I I work with people from this who speak this this language. Uh, if I say like you are crying in a sentence, it's yulami ganba, yulami ganba. Mm-hmm. So yulami is so if you look at the sentence yulami, it's yula is to cry. That's the basic stem. The me here shows the tense. Uh, they only have two tenses, past and non-past. So present, future is all the same. Oh, so right. that's how they call it in Japanese too, <laughs> past and non-past. Exactly. Yes, mm-hmm. it's 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 exactly like Japanese. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So you love mm-hmm. me. And the kanpa, the the then that's when the the next word shows more detail. So the kanpa, the ka shows the present tense, and the unba is you, but one person. So you were crying. That's how we. Uh-huh. That's how. That's how they. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. and so that, that, the whole that, word that just has a grammatical mm-hmm. meaning. Mm-hmm. So then, mm-hmm. Doesn't exactly. carry semantic. Wow. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. So the verb the verb never changes. Only has two forms: past, present. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry, uh, past and non-past. Yeah. yeah. But the the, mm-hmm. the other word will show all the other information. Who is doing what? Yeah. So that's yeah. Kanpa. Mm-hmm. And then if you look at the next line, Wangami Garna. So Wangami is to speak. So Wanga mm-hmm. means in many languages in in Australia it means language or uh, speech talking. So Wanga means mm-hmm. uh, talking. Present tense uh, or, or future tense, it can be. And Karna is I doing, I'm doing it. So I'm uh-huh. speaking. That's how they say mm-hmm. it. Okay. And uh, Parangamika. Parangamika means she is walking like this in, in a present tense. She walks. And the, the ka just shows that it's a one person doing it who is not me and you. So it's a third person mm-hmm. singular. One person doing okay. it something. It's very, it's very precise. Uh, mm-hmm. And then yeah. if we go here. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's, it's a bit different from European languages. Um, mm. Some aspects of it, but you, you see some, so I just put a, a list here, but it's, it's uh, we don't have to go to the detail every word. But um, if you look at the word in the past tense, you have yula janba, wanga jarna, barngaja. So in, in the past tense, the, the 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 word changes, depending on the language and also in, in the same language, they also have different uh, declensions, mm. like different uh, different patterns of, of nouns. So uh, not declensions, what's the word? Conjugations. So it's like so. So it's, the, the suffix might change depending on which which group it is. Like in French, uh, words with uh, with a and re and ir, they have some little bit different. Mm. Uh, okay, uh, yeah. Uh, past. Mm-hmm. Yeah, voilà. different groups. So, mm. Aller partir. Uh, it's, it's different in, in French mm. uh, uh, or Spanish, and yeah. in in Walpri, there are like four or five different uh, groups of, of verbs that, that have different mm. patterns. But I chose from the same the same group so that you can mm-hmm. see the <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So cry, mm-hmm. speak, to run is the same. And then the present tense, mm-hmm. yulami uh, and the future, the future, remember the verb doesn't change. It's always the non-pass. So yulami, it's the same. But the, mm-hmm. the next word, the particle changes to show the tense of the future. So kapunpa, yulami kapunpa, wangami kapunpa, and parngami kapu. So these, I, I walk, I will, you know, I will cry. Uh, sorry, you will cry, I will cry, and he or she will cry. And that's mm-hmm. how it changes. Yeah. yeah. And in the past tense also, but only in the past tense, I, I've never found it in, in the present or the future. Um, mm-hmm. Verbs will stay the same, but the 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 little particle, uh, so in the past tense, it joins with the word. It's not a separate word, it, it joins, it's the same word. Mm-hmm. And it's, it also shows aspect, like a perfective, imperfective. Mm-hmm. Like in Slavic languages, that kind of yeah. very, very similar. It's, it's very similar. Mm-hmm. So like uh, Yula Jalpa Yula is like, you were crying when something happened, or you were crying for a long time. Yeah. You know, it's mm. not like you cry once and finish. So it's it's something like a, yeah, yeah. This this type of a, like in Slavic languages, it happens only in the past tense. Very interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, mm. I was speaking when something happened, or I was saying something, and you know, something like that, or I was saying something over and over again, but now I don't say it anymore. Something like that. Mm. Like mm. like in Russian, uh, when you say ya gavaril and ya skazal, mm-hmm. like difference okay. yeah, they have it as well in one brief mm-hmm. very similar um semantic uh sort of range yeah okay. so this is uh, yeah and then the panka java so the the i put a, a very short description bottom so a basic sentence can just consider mm-hmm. a verb and then a second person auxiliary so the auxiliary is the little word that comes after it that can be uh shows mm-hmm. the tense or the aspect 
uh, perfective, imperfective in the past or present or future. And that's like one sentence. It yeah. <laughs> mm. yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious, uh, like when you say mm -hmm. that in the past it's uh, like one word, is this linked mm -hmm. to a writing system? Because I assume there maybe there is no writing system or at least not uh, in relation yeah. to all languages, or is it something you can sense in speaking? Mm -hmm. Like less yeah, of you're a right. stop? Very good question. So the in the past tense, like in, in the way they say it, it, it's pronounced as one word. So the, the in, oh. in in yeah. these languages, the stress is always on the first syllable of the word. So yola me kanba. But in the mm. past it's yola jamba pronounced as one oh, uh, one right. one word. So you can mm. you can tell it it's one word. And 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 sometimes in, in, in WordPress you can you can break it, you can split the word and put it in, in different positions with the, the word always oh. free, but not in the past tense is like one word. Oh, right. <laughs> so you can mm. tell that that's why it's one word. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So this is uh, this is interesting uh, feature of the language. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah. So um I might do a few more, but on different languages this time, uh give you a feel yeah. of what they're like. Sure. So this is this is Warbury. So another language that we have is okay. So this is a, this is the same language, but I'm just giving you an example of how it's worked out. So this is how do you say the man sees two kangaroos? So ngarkangu kapalangu marlu chara nyanyi. Oh, you hear a lot of yeah. Ngarkangu ngarkangu kapalangu marlu chara nyanyi. So the man sees two kangaroos. So so the if you can break it down, this is what is broken down. I have to go slowly, but yeah. <laughs> so uh, this is ngarka means man. Okay, and the ngu here shows it's the 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 ergative, which means the person doing the action. So the man is doing the action, not mm -hmm. not the kangaroo. And then the kapalangu, the ka here shows the present tense. Palangu here is the third person. So it, it's really complicated. It's a third person singular subject, a third person dual object. He does something to two things. Uh, they, mm. That's okay. all that information. So there is a dual like, form. Mm. Oh, yes, yes. Singular, dual, plural. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then marlu is kangaroo. And then jara here, this is the two uh, dual suffix. That means there are two kangaroos. And then nyanyi is to see, non-past. So in present or future tense. But because of the ka here, we know that it's it's a present tense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this is how it <laughs> this is how I said wow. it works. And mm. because the word is free, you can put you can rearrange anything anywhere. You can put the, the word in front, you can put the word man at the back and anywhere, except that the mm. This kapalangu, this this here must be always the second word in the sentence, so that then it, it it's like a coordinator tells you who is doing what. That, mm. that is clear. So this yeah. is yeah. So you can yeah. So if you look at a sentence, you can say this is the same sentence, of course. You can say it in this way. <laughs> kapalangu, maru jara mm. You can say jara kapalangu nyani ngarkangu. Same meaning, no difference. Nyani kapalangu maru jara ngarkangu. Mm -hmm. And you guys in Narakam Kapalango Nyani Marujara. So the, the, the suffix is very important. And usually mm -hmm. when you change the, uh, the 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 word order, it shows the emphasis. Like you're are you talking about the man, are you talking about the kangaroo? Are you talking about, you know? Uh, I think I think in, in Slavic languages also you have something like this. Uh yes, you, you can change. Yes, yes. Okay, so we were talking about the different uh word orders. I was here. Yeah, so this is the way. Where were we? Yeah, so the different ways you can put the sentence to show the emphasis. On uh, different languages, uh, sorry, they did in the same language, but different different parts of the sentence, uh, mm -hmm. where you want to emphasize the man doing the action or the the kangaroo that you are seeing. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, but mm -hmm. I, I saw the person, you know, there's the kangaroo, but I didn't I didn't uh, speak to it. I saw it, so you and you can put the wherever you want to emphasize in front. So it's mm -hmm. it's a very very free word order language. Uh, I think the only language I I've seen that's very similar to this would maybe Latin and maybe mm -hmm. yeah something like. Ancient Greek has got a very free uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think Latin can be quite uh, mm -hmm. can toy with. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Gaelic is pretty free, but um, yeah. Yeah. there is really like what we usually say that's it really mm -hmm. strongly marks us when we hear it in yeah. a way different from the way we would usually mm -hmm. say it. So it's not that uh, free. I, it's actually quite frustrating because sometimes I'm all happy with the sentence. Uh, <laughs> like, and it yeah, just doesn't sound it, it like doesn't what sound, say, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Does it sound right? I was like, I, yeah, it's just convention. <laughs> it should be fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's interesting, yeah, yeah. So the the, the languages here are, are like this as well. In Australia, they're like this, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. Mm. unfortunately. Yeah. So it, it's also very interesting. So, um, yeah, I'll I'll go to the next slide. Uh, yeah. So this is just to give a a quick. So basically, it's a free word order, but the auxiliary is always in the second. The second word is always the 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 what we call the auxiliary. So the tense and the pronouns are always on the second mm -hmm. position. 
And that that's like a guide that tells you, okay, what words <laughs> does what. So mm-hmm. when they hear it, it's, it's very clear they know who is doing what to whom. And then also the, the cases that helps to to sort of untangle and figure out what's going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So it's a, it's very interesting. So I might go to the next slide. Um, so this is a neighboring language. Also, they are very similar to WordPress, except that they have very, very complicated uh, auxiliaries. I, I'm still trying to figure out how how to how to explain this. Like like in this yeah. sentence, right? So if you look at the bottom, it says Kayili Pajarla Nganbay Laberni Ngajunga. The the Pajarla literally means it's like he or she, one person is doing something with me. And that's it, one word. <laughs> yeah, they, they 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 squish the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. So that, that mm-hmm. and then everything else you can flip it. it it's very free. You can put anyway. So Kayili means north. Bajarla Nganbayi is a man, uh, mm-hmm. absolutive. So so the man doesn't have any any suffixes because it's an intransitive verb. Laparni to run. So the man mm-hmm. is running, and then Ngajuga with me. But the whole information he runs with me is also squashed into the Bajarla. Like one one word <laughs> has all this mm-hmm. information, and, wow. and they've got like like fifty or sixty different particles in the second position that shows you I with you, you with me, you did something to me or something like that, wow. all of it. And it, it's very, uh, very complicated, very complex. I don't know how people learn this, this kind of, <laughs> this like, it's, it's incredible. It's almost like, reminds me of programming because I'm dealing with like natural yes. language processing. Sometimes yeah. you just, mm-hmm. you give a, let's say an automatic translation system, the sentence yeah. and then in brackets, like some information yeah. that only the neural network will understand, like the order or what, how words exactly. refer to one another, like really big, like vector that's absolutely understandable yeah. for us. Yeah, so- Exactly. So in, in this language, the second word is is probably that vector. It tells you who does what to whom or with whom. Mm-hmm. It, that's mm-hmm. the whole sentence is is encapsulated in that that second word. Yeah, it, it's really like neural programming, like <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like programming the, the, the language. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So this uh, this this language is spoken in northwest uh, northwest of yeah. So that that corner of uh, Australia. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's a one machari. And then we'll go to another language. And we'll go to more 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 uh, interesting features. This one is I'm I, I have trouble listening to this language because it reminds you of French. There's a lot of liaison between words; they all oh. join together. You cannot tell yeah. where one word starts and the other one ends. I mean, <laughs> and they lost all the vowels. They're so only like a and e. Uh, that's it. So <laughs> that's yeah. structure. Should yeah. be comfortable with that. <laughs> it's a very very interesting. So like you have sentence like mm-hmm. this. So as you see here, so the the girl is sitting in the shade. It's they they spell it as three words, but nobody says it like that. It's like vroom together. Marlu mm, Yeah. That's how they mm. say. It. So the, so the, the marla the e is silent and it joins with the marlu lyalanam. Uh, that's mm. how they say. Mm. Which is a girl sitting in the shade. Yeah. That's yeah. how they say it. And then a more complex. So a little bit of a breakdown of this type of sentence. It, it's very similar to the Warbury ones. You have Marla, which is the girl. There's no suffix, but she's the 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 the, the actor in an intransitive. She's sitting down, so there's no object. But the ulyalla, ulya means the shade, and there's a la to show the location. But it has, uh, in this language, because they lost so many vowels, um, a lot of suffixes sound the same. <laughs> so it doesn't mm-hmm. matter. Ulyalla can be in the shade, with the shade, because of the shade. But mm-hmm. anyway, in this case, it's, she's sitting in the shade. Anama mm-hmm. is to sit, and dama is to show, simply shows the present tense in this in, mm-hmm. for this language. Yeah, so so they have a distinction between present and future for verbs for this one. So <laughs> yeah. it's a, it's a it's very interesting language. Um, so they they have a lot of uh, like this one. So the, if the girl is eating meat, so this is like a transitive sentence. So she is doing something to the meat. So it's a marla karail gumma. So it's a different way of breaking down. So so the the girl takes the la now because she's the one doing the action to something else. And uh, kara means meat. It also means animal. So in, in their language, there's no difference between a meat animal and 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 the, the meat that you get from the animal. So like in, 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 in English, it's pig and pork. For them, is animal and, and meat, the same word. Uh, yeah, so kara means animal that you can eat. So kangaroo, uh, I think I think also the different types of kangaroo. I'm not sure if birds are included as well. Probably a different word, but yeah. So it's like kangaroo and those types of animals are all uh, kura <laughs> in this language. Yeah, yeah. The same word for meat and animal. Yeah. And they have the same word for also for like like plant and the plant that can be eaten as well. The same mm. word. Uh-huh. Plant cannot okay. be eaten. It's a different word. Yeah. So fruit and yeah. plant that can be eaten, it's the same word. It, in the, I think it's myrna, myrna in, in this language. Yeah. So it's any kind of plant or vegetable or fruit that can be eaten is the same word mm. versus 
things that cannot be eaten. So which means children, when they from young, they learn to speak, they already know that oh, murder, okay, that can be eaten. That that, that, uh, that one is poisonous. We know already mm, just okay. from the yeah. Mm. So that that's about the, that's about the culture. Mm -hmm. So gura mm. is is meat uh, that can be eaten. Yeah. So mm. and then th we're going up to the north, very far corner. There's a different language family. This is completely different, but a lot of the same sounds. Da 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 da, like this this type of sounds. Mm. So I, I won't go into detail, but they have gender, like four genders. Uh, some languages are three, but most have like four. So it's oh, a masculine. Never heard thing. of four genders. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not in Europe, but in in this one, yes. So it's like it's like yeah. masculine. Mm. Vegetables that can be eaten, and then everything else. That's how they divide uh -huh, the world. They okay. see mm. Men, women, food that can be eaten, and then other everything else. Mm. <laughs> and and, and oh. I, I don't speak it, but but uh, yeah. So it, normally they do it with prefixes. So if you see na na here na here na make be na go bang yeah na make be na na make be binyin. So like they 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 have like European languages. So the words for this and that also have gender will change. The descriptive words, adjectives, you know, big small, they also have different forms. Uh, they change the normally is the prefix, so the beginning will change. So na is for men, masculine. Nal is for feminine. Man is for vegetables, edible that can be eaten, and kun is everything else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. how they that's how they divide their, their world for them. So kun mek be kun gang. Yeah. So they it, it this one is more like more natural for a uh, so if you speak a European language like, like Bulgarian or French, this would probably be more something like this. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. the, the words have to agree. The word for this and that, and the word for the description will have yeah. to agree with the the noun. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So this even seem to make more sense, like maybe inanimate yeah, yeah. objects are always neuter while we book yeah. and like you can never tell. Yeah, <laughs> actually, yeah, yeah, the yeah, theory yeah. makes sense. It's it's frustrating to kind of like like give an example of cases like um Intended. like genders and uh, like uh, to like uh, to a Japanese yeah. student because uh, I can't really justify why something is yeah, yeah, they not they ask you why yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, when I was learning French many years, I, I can, why do you say la victime in French when it, even it's a man? It can be la victime. <laughs> I yeah. don't know. Yeah, yeah, la police. Yeah. La police. Why, why la police. la when it's, yeah. you know, this, it, why yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> can be frustrating. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So for, for them, for these languages, it's, it's more logical. It's a like human male, human yeah. female, and, and, food and, and something else. So it, 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 yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> it's more logical than mm. in, yeah. in European yeah. languages. So yeah, this is this is a one feature I like. I hope to learn more of this about this this group. It's it's really interesting. Uh, there are many dialects. This this one has a huge variety. I don't even know which dialect this one is from, but uh, mm. yeah, it's uh, interesting. Mm. And then and then I I will not even try to pronounce this. They have a lot of this type of words. <laughs> wow. Like you can combine a noun a noun verb object into one into one word. Mm. And you can tell it's one word because they have the the prefix to show the this the ga here shows the the conjugation is it he she it the, sub, the subject object, and then the object is here the next word and then a little description the verb, and then a, a suffix to show what kind of <laughs> what kind of what mm. tense it is. So this is a non past yeah. So it's it's like this. So I'm going to cut my I'm going to cut my hair. There's one word. Mm. Yeah, so literally. Mm. Yeah, they they combine it. This they they this one is broken up nicely, but yeah, it's a uh, it's really interesting. Uh, this mm. this type of language. Yeah, so this is this one I would like to learn more. But uh, my understanding is that people who speak these languages nowadays, the young people, they they speak a more simplified version. They won't they probably mm. use like separate words. They won't combine everything into one like the way their their grandparents mm. would speak. But my understanding, I don't know how how yeah mm. if people still maintain this, but it's very interesting. Okay, so the next yeah. slide, we'll talk about social linguistics, so the, the culture a little bit. And there's some things that they do. So um, a lot of languages have a mother-in-law language. So it's, it's like keigo in Japanese, but you only use it when you're talking to your mother-in-law or in some areas when you're with, when she can hear you. Wow. So a man and only it's a man and a mother. I don't know why it's not the woman and there's the man. It's always the man and the mother. There's always a, a, a separation. Mm -hmm. They cannot in some areas they can't even be in the same room, or if they're mm -hmm. in the same area they cannot speak to each other. They have to tell like like my what my one of my friends does is his grandfather, his, no, not his grandfather, his so his grandmother and her daughter-in-law. So the daughter-in-law would tell the the granddaughter, can you please tell your grandma to do do uh, the, sorry the son-in-law will tell the, the daughter-in-law to tell tell grandma to you know take this and 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 give it, and they're like like literally like 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 10 feet away but the, mm. wow. they can't speak mm. directly to them yeah and if they speak to them they already have to use traditionally a, a different register like different words uh, a, a polite mm -hmm. form of the language like in japanese uh this type of polite level but i i, mm -hmm. I it's very interesting and you find it the whole australia has this so in in mm -hmm. some form or some way or another 
uh, this is really, in, in some areas, many women can, uh, the, the, the mother-in-law can talk to her son-in-law and vice versa, but they would also use some type of uh, uh, formal, very formal language. Uh -huh. So, mm -hmm. uh, yes. Mm -hmm. So this is part of the culture. This is an interesting one. And then sign language, we talked about this before. They have, uh, yeah. most areas have their own sign language. They use mm -hmm. either for when they're hunting or in, in, certain, or in taboo situations. Mm -hmm. And the third one is ceremonial language. I don't know very a lot about it, but when in many groups, when children are become like when you're going through puberty, uh, like men and women, they 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 do what's called men's business and women's business. They say it in, mm. in, in Aboriginal English. It means that they have initiation ceremony. You become a man, you're a woman now. And mm. in some troops, some troops, when you're in this process during this period, the, the boys cannot speak. Uh, their own language, mm -hmm. their normal language, they use a special form of the language with specific words or something like this, or they can't say certain words. To it. So th this is very common throughout Australia in different areas, mm -hmm. in different ways. But yeah, wow. <laughs> so this is a, this is a feature wow. of the language. And, then, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, very, very quickly, just very quickly, this is the last one, uh, Australia and other areas. Europeans were not the first people to come to Australia and introduce their, their culture. Before that, yeah. uh, in the North Australia, uh, there was contact within Malay areas, like mm -hmm. Malay, Indonesia, with the northern part of Australia, because it's very close. You see, like from Bali, you can literally sail to <laughs> northern mm -hmm. Australia. And mm -hmm. so that's... There's contact with people from Malay and 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 uh, Makassar, Makassar especially, but the areas in um, Indonesia, uh, it's not the east, closer to central Indonesia. Uh, you can there are, there are people who are uh, traditionally were uh, like kind of like sea gypsies. They were sailors, and they would sail to Australia, for example. Um, mm. One of the products that they would bring was uh, what's called um, um, a sea cucumber. Mm. Sea cucumber so, uh, in French, yeah. the biche de mer. Yeah, so the, 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 the strange the, creature. The, <laughs> yeah, we, I, <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. Uh, mm. I, I, I like it. I eat it a lot. As well. I used to eat it a lot when I was a boy in Malaysia. So it's it's a, it's a type of um, it's not a worm. It's a cousin of the starfish, but it's it looks like a worm. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. okay. yeah. yeah. So we, we call it gamat in in Malay, but in, in for them and and so they went. These people went all the way to Australia to get gamat to get uh, mm. this, and they they have this contact, and then they will of course take it, dry it up, and sell it to the Chinese. So it goes all mm. the way <laughs> to China. Yeah. This contact, mm. yeah. Yeah, so the, the mm. northern part of Australia has contact with uh, uh, Southeast Asia for a long time. So people people have uh, there are a lot of words from Malay, Indonesian in uh, mm. the Darwin, the languages on the northern coast of Australia. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Cool. And then, of course, you have Creole, uh, Creole, mm. which is a, a type of English. Uh, it was developed because of communication. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. it, it's, some say it's broken English. No, it, it, it's a separate language. It's almost English mm -hmm. words, but with. Uh, an Aboriginal syntax, for example, that, that's developed mm. in parts of Northern Australia. Yeah. So mm. this is, uh, this, and so yeah. So this is this is about it. I think that is it. Oh, well, this is just uh, information. If you're interested to to read about it, it's it's very academic, like the numbers of languages and all. Um, mm. uh, just to summarize, I would say twenty five percent of of Aboriginal languages that were spoken before the eighteenth century are now extinct. Uh, mm. The current ones, 50% are heavily, really under a threat of extinction. And only like about a quarter are really healthy that are being learned by children. And yeah. Mm -hmm. So so you see this. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So 50% or even more than 50%. Mm. But yeah, it depends on how you look at it. Yeah. So this is this is the problem. And then you can, the next one is a map. So you can see a pattern. So that on the your right hand side, that's mm. the areas that where people first settled from Europe first landed and settled there. And on the left is the languages that are where these traditional languages are still spoken. You can see there's a correspondence because wherever the people landed for the first time, that's where the languages died out first. Mm -hmm. in, yeah. in, in, you can see the pattern, uh, one map and the other. There's a, <laughs> there's a, clear, there's a yeah. clear correlation. So so wherever there's urbanization, where people came in from Europe and other areas and, and, and destroyed the land, that's where the languages were extinct. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, you see the pattern. There's a pattern of yeah. Mm. So this is a very interesting yeah. So I, I just put a source. It was I don't own this this map, but uh, yeah. So mm. yeah, I think that's about it. Yeah, I'm mm. just I I put here some information if if people would like to know more. Um, yeah, yeah. So this, these are some areas that you can look at some of the websites and and organizations that are either into language revival or language promotion. Yeah. Mm, so this, yeah. this yeah the cultural groups yeah
So I think mm -hmm. that is, oh, that is my contact if you want to get in touch with me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sure, thank sure, you. Sure. <laughs> uh, would you like to and tell think... us and um, our audience about uh, your YouTube initiative? Like you, you're you planning yeah. to post and you're posting videos about Aboriginal languages? Mm. Yeah, so so I have actually two two. The first one is is more about actually Austronesian languages. So there's Bahasa Malaysia, Bahasa Indonesia, so languages of my the, my native uh, region, my native part of Malaysia and Indonesia, and also the neighboring groups. So even like Malagasy, I've, I'm learning a bit of Malagasy uh, just to see mm. the correlation with uh, Malay, Bahasa Melayu, and, and Malagasy. There's this relationship all the way up to uh, Polynesia. There, mm -hmm. there's actually well, the part of the same family like very big but it, it, it's very like if you speak someone asked me if you speak malay or indonesian can you understand maori and i said well it's like a, a can can a monolingual english speaker understand uh bulgarian or russian for example like that. <laughs> yeah <laughs> you, you might yeah. notice a few words that are the same but generally no so the yeah. same for us it, it's like that exactly like that for us uh mm -hmm. as well but they're part of the same family so there, there's a uh, the same four or five thousand years ago it must have been the same uh, ancestor uh, mm. that, that's what I think. and then my second channel uh, it's it's called well the first one is called languages to learn uh, I will probably put a description somewhere uh, yeah. put it in the description somewhere to, yeah, or, or, or send you link. yeah send it to you in a thank you yes yeah. uh, language mm -hmm. to learn that's what I'm doing and the other one uh, I call it learning rare languages and that's more on Aboriginal languages and 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 things like that and also language in North America so I'm 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 currently working on this is a personal project but for uh, languages for um, uh, how to say I'm, I'm i'm writing it uh promotion try to promote more sort of lesser type of uh, languages people don't that people don't really think about so much mm. so mm. so yeah so like yeah so the uh, currently the main project now is navajo which is uh -huh. different yes. yeah that's very, probably the only very... one i i know the name yeah, yeah. 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 also mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you probably mm -hmm. know it from uh, hollywood made a lot of movie uh, uh quite a famous movie about this uh, a few years back on the court talkers mm -hmm. Yeah, and then uh, also uh, languages from uh, Canada as well, and and uh, Mayan languages are fascinating. Mm. I find it really mm. yeah. So it, it's Yucatec and all that. Uh, you can hear some Yucatec in I think the the new uh, uh, Black Panther movie with uh, with uh, the, the guy from uh, what's his name. Uh, one of the characters was speaking in in the Yucatec Mayan. Uh, yeah, I uh, heard. Of, actually, I didn't watch the film, but I heard uh, heard about it. Like it's uh, meant to be a Aztec civilization, like under the sea, yeah. and they yeah. get like some. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. Exactly. So mm. uh, I think Maya. So Maya Aztec. They are different languages. So the oh. the Aztecs oh. speak Nahuatl, Sorry. and the Mayans have the oh, yeah, yeah. language. <laughs> oh, it's fine. But it's the same uh, part of yeah, the the same mm. part of the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. So <laughs> cool. I, think, I think that's it. Uh, let me just. Right. Put this yeah. So thank you. Well, I can uh, stop sharing. Mm. We just have one, to one ask. Uh, mm -hmm. Does kangaroo actually mean anything? <laughs> In yeah, an Aboriginal yeah. language. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, 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 uh, it's actually a misconception because what happened is the yeah. there's a, a legend that says it doesn't mean uh, really an animal. It's, it's something like, oh, uh, I don't understand you. Yes, yes, different. that's like uh, no, no, it, yeah, <laughs> very yeah. common so thing. Yeah, it's a very, yeah. it's a very common uh, meme, meme or a very common uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 urban legend, but no, it's not. It actually means uh, kangaroo, kangaroo in one of the one of the languages. Oh, it actually means kangaroo. Mm. Oh, okay. Yes, 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 okay. yes. Very yes. <laughs> good to know. <laughs> yeah, but it came out. Uh, yeah, but it, it could be. It might, it might it's a, a very a plausible uh, situation. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just... And uh, okay. something that is sadly a, a little bit less fun, but I guess like with the mm -hmm. uh, languages that are being extinct, mm -hmm. that also means that quite a lot of, I suppose, people will not have access to stories of old. And uh, I yeah. guess the, that, that probably is an issue for like a, our origin in uh, in, uh, mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. in, uh, yeah. in Australia, because sadly enough, there's a, I, I guess a lot of it was destroyed by uh, by a colonization. Mm -hmm. It's really, uh, it's it's, yeah. it's great that people try to preserve like the language yes. because they're kind of vectors to <laughs> stories of old, I guess, <laughs> like the best way to, yeah. to yeah. put it. But... Yeah. It, that, that's Actually, I can show you one, one more, maybe a slide, but I, I'm going to go to, I'm going to stop sharing. Is it okay? Uh, yeah, yes. sure. And then what, what I'll do is I'll go to uh, Wikipedia because there's a very good article about this on on, on the, the culture and the language. Uh, mm. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, okay. Yes. Let me see. Yeah. So let me just share this and might be interesting so uh ooh, 
sharing and I will share my screen on Wikipedia. All right, so there's a very good article. Uh, if you can find this, uh, yeah, so just look at, you should be able to see this, Aus Australian yes. Aboriginal Kinship. Yeah. Mm. So this is a very interesting system. So it, it's how the language is tied to the culture. So um, what happens is in, in most societies, people are divided into different groups. Not not It's not like a family name. And it's not like mm. the in Indian, like an Indian caste system, like different, not really. It's everybody's equal, but everybody mm. is born into a specific group. And and this mm. group is not passed out from your father or mother. It's like it, if your parents come from certain groups, you are from another group. Oh, and, mm. and they do this. They do this so that people you can only marry if you're in one group, you can only marry a, a man or woman from another group that is and, and this ensures among number one, uh, mm. there's no incest. Number one. Mm. Number two, it also shows that you are connected to everybody else. So, for example, I'll give an example. Uh, maybe the I'm gonna is oh, this is very interesting. Wow, they have a lot. Okay, so like mm. this. So this is the Northern Australian system. So so we talk about this is the one with gender. So then uh, we talk about the language with gender. This is na is for masculine names and female is nga. Nga. Mm. So the different groups are okay. So so what happens is this. So if a man from this group Mm. preferably has to marry a woman from either this group or this group and the children must be from another will be from another group mm. and then the children from this group can only marry people from other groups so there's a certain there are wow. like eight on i think eight, eight or 16 eight groups 16 mm. yeah eight times two 16 16 groups and mm. and this keeps everybody happy and then, but this, it's more than that so so not only do you know this but mm. every group has their own like songs and 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 rituals and they have certain places in their land that they take care of. some will take care of the mountains some will take care of the the, the river mm. take care of the you know mm. the, the, the the grasslands it depends so they all have a certain responsibility and then uh when you meet someone from another group you t the first thing you ask is of course what what is your which group are you in uh, so mm. in word it's a nia nia. So nia nia. What what's your your? They call it a in English maybe skin group, but that's I I don't like the term because it it, it doesn't. It's got nothing to do with skin skin color, mm. but it's it's more like mm. how you're connected. And then uh, they will say something like uh, uh, which group? And I oh there's ah oh, we're brothers. We're from the same group. Oh no wait you are my cousin or something because remember different mm. groups are related to other groups by by marriage. And even mm. though if you're not related to somebody else, just because if, if let's say you are an older woman and you are from my mother's group, then ah, you're my mother. I have to treat you like my mother, for example. Wow. Or you're from my That's uncle's, cool. but I have to treat you like my uncle. And, and mm. even if we're not related. So so, so one of the things when you go to a uh, society, the uh, Aboriginal group, when you meet, because from uh, people weren't very, they didn't live in big cities, they live in small nomadic groups. So when different groups yeah. met, ah, which group are you? And then, okay, then, ah, okay, so you're, you're my cousin, you're my, you know something like this so so that's how they help each other and and okay so if, if i'm in the same group as uh the, the the child of an older couple i have to take care of them like, like my parents i have to give them things and all and then they treat me so so this this cycle was run around in mm -hmm. in, in and that's how they, they they keep sort of the peace and they keep things organized in a in a society with no with no uh, uh what do call it no 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 yeah. ruling class no no yeah, no, yeah. no government. Mm -hmm. That's how they keep things running for for uh, how many thousand years? Yeah, wow. <laughs> uh, <great. laughs> amazing. Yes, yeah. it's interesting. Yeah. So this is yeah. This is this group is this is the central desert. Yeah. So the uh, world pre group is very similar. Japan, Jalin, Nakamura. So my my colleague gave me he gave me a, a name as well. So that when I when I go to his his uh, area, his his grandmother, his his grandfather know how to how to treat me. He gave me the name uh, Changala. This one. Mm. So he gave me wow. this this name, Tiangala, which is his mm. group. So, so technically, I can only marry a woman who is a Nungurai. Nungurai. <laughs> and my children will be, will be Champi Jinba or Nambi Jinba. This is male, this is female. So yeah, mm. depends, but, yeah so Tiangala. So I can only marry, yeah. So this is the, this is how it works in, in well, the system. Wow. <laughs> so That's great that you have not, experienced this mm -hmm. firsthand, like not only academically, but actually you, you've really yeah, felt yeah, it yeah, kind yeah, of. Yeah. Mm. Yes, it's really interesting. And, and so the one of the main sort of misunderstandings between, of course, Europeans and, and them is because obviously they don't have uh, the, the the system in, in Europe. So when they met them, they who are these strange people and where did they fit into the? So mm. <laughs> that, that's, that's one of the things that happened. Yeah, this this was also one of the cause of misunderstandings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So so if, if if for example, if I go to my friend's family and tell them that I, I am Jangalan, ah, okay, so you're you're my 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 grandson. Technically, you're my grandson. Even I'm not his grandson, but because I'm the same group, so they have to treat me like their grandson, uh, even mm -hmm. if they don't know me. And yeah, so that that's how they they work. Uh, so yeah, so it shows you, and also because people live in very small family groups, so you don't really meet a lot of people anyway. So 
mm. in traditional mm-hmm, yeah. societies in Australia. Yeah. So generally, yeah. So so this is a, an interesting uh, way to keep uh, people, everybody happy. <laughs> in the same way. Yeah. Well, but of course, uh, if I meet, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And if, mm. if I meet a, a woman who is from my mother-in-law's who I cannot talk to, I have to follow all the taboos as well, even though if we're not, you know, we're actually related, but just because she's from my mother-in-law's uh, a group, then I have to treat her like uh, my mother-in-law. So I, I have to use yeah. all the ritual language or avoidance, the same thing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. So this is uh, how it goes. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Well, yeah, cool. well, yeah. well, thank you for, thank yeah. you for sharing. It's, no, uh, it's very no interesting. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, really. yeah. Hope it's not, not too much. <laughs> 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 oh, it's perfect. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. So, great. Thank yeah, you so great. much. Thank you. thank you for it's a pleasure yeah. talking to you and learning so no much. And we'd no be problem, happy really. to learn more from you about uh, another type of language in the future. Maybe, yeah, and... yeah, maybe we talk a bit more about uh, something like language in, in Malay or Indonesian. Uh, Absolutely. This area from, yes, we would love to. Yeah, mm. Okay, thank you. So as we say in Malaysia, terima kasih. Terima kasih, which means thank you. Terima <laughs> kasih. It means uh, accept, accept love. May you accept love. That's how we mm, that literally. Oh, Terima kasih. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you say thank you in in uh, Bulgarian? I think. Well, it's a very long word. Blago daria. Bo. Blago daria. Blago daria. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. It I, kind I, of means I, to I, give I, blessings. I, it's a beautiful word, mm, but it's quite I, long. So I, sometimes we actually say merci. <laughs> and actually merci. i have a blast i have a blast with my family because they're like so how do you say merci in, in uh, bulgarian i'm like yeah merci it's actually a rare that you say like, mm-hmm. yeah. i don't know well in writing we will definitely yeah, say writing, definitely, but, uh, yeah. yes or yeah, 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 yeah. in yeah. small form I, i've seen it in russian as well something similar in russian or something blah, blah, yeah something like this i think i think it's used as well uh, yes yes mm. uh, it can be used like maybe not directly like to say thank yeah, you but yeah. to to like express the action of giving thanks uh, yeah, 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 yeah. There is a word. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, so it's interesting. Yeah. So I only started learning Russian like four months ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's very basic, but it's uh, interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's it's it's, it's uh, interesting. It's a hobby because I, I used to I I listen a lot to Russian classical music. So I thought mm, maybe time to learn. Mm. Uh, <laughs> no, that's yes. yeah. <laughs> the Russian people sometimes complain that. Um, they have many people wanting them to sing their like uh, famous songs yeah. when yeah. they meet yeah. them. Yes, I, I, I know this so. song. So. <laughs> Can you okay, sing for so. me? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you. Um, any any other questions or anything? <laughs> I'm okay. Um, nothing I can think. Uh, no, of. I think we're, yeah, yeah, it's we're... been really comprehensive. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you. So have thank a good you very much. evening. And thank you. Have a good evening. See you again yeah. soon. Yeah. See you. And, uh, thank you so much.